So here we are in the Deep Root Lab, the field uh, where we do experimentation as part of the Deep Frontier project. So we are different uh, experimental plot where we grow different uh, species. The idea of this project is to find new crops or try to, 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 to grow crops that are able to use more efficiently the soil resource. Either maintain or reduce the amount of fertilizer applied to the agricultural field in general. And this is uh, what we call a mini rhizotron. So basically it's a transparent plastic pipe. When the, the root of the crop will grow, they will display along the pipe. And by inserting a camera, we will be able to take picture of the upper part of the, of the tube. So we will have an, an idea of the amount of root and the depth of the rooting pattern. And this other tube is what we call a an access tube, so it's a, just an aluminium tube inserted in the, in the soil and um, so there is some openings at different depths at uh, 1 meter, 2.5 meter and 4 meter and by inserting a core inside uh, filled with soil we are able to either sample root material or apply uh, nutrient isotopes or water isotopes and track if the plant is able to um, extract nutrient at those different depths. So we have a huge variety of crop in, in, in this field. It's around 15 or 20 variety we are testing. Commonly in agriculture, most crop are investigating the first meter of the soil. There is a, a huge uh, pool of soil resource that is uh, left unused, like below this first meter. And we know some of the crop are able to investigate deeper in the soil, like down to 1.5 meter, 2 meter. But there has been a few uh, research done on these uh, roots and in these uh, soil layers. And what we are trying to, to, to investigate is to see how active these roots are in these soil layers, because Compared to the topsoil, the subsoil layer are quite different. They are prone to groundwater fluctuation, like rising and uh, low lowering. Usually also anoxic condition, where there is a lack of oxygen. So in general, it's different soil condition that also will induce different uh, ac root activity. We are trying to understand how active and how efficient these crops are able to use the soil resource in these layers. It's not because we see with the mini rhizotron roots down to 2 meters that the roots will effectively uptake nitrogen or potassium or any nutrients or just more commonly water. So that's, that's the basic purpose of our project and try to see if we integrate those deep-rooted crop in uh, agricultural rotation, what could be the benefit. Here we are testing a, a, a different way of growing crops. Uh, it's what we call border cropping. And the, the idea is inspired from uh, agroforestry. And basically we are combining a crop that is deep rooted. So we have deep roots with a crop that is uh, more shallow rooted. So here we have an annual oat that is just been sown and, uh, and a perennial lucerne growing as a inter row, if we can call this a row, or into a border and uh, so the idea is that they will use uh, the soil resource in different layers and we are trying to see if by sensing the, the neighboring uh, crop if one uh, change their behavior so that's what we call partitioning that we we, we believe that the annual crop will more uptake, use the resource in the upper soil layers and the perennials will shift to more deeper soil layers We are a, a big group of uh, researcher, PhD student like me and a postdoc and, uh, and we are all focusing on different fields. Like some are focusing more on uh, nitrogen uptake and, uh, and some like me are focusing on water uptake. So the aim of my PhD is to see how um, these deep rooted crop are able to uptake water in deep soil layers. So basically for some of them we know and we can see uh, with the, the mini rhizotron pipe that they have roots in deep soil layers. 
And now we want to understand uh, if these roots are able to absorb water from the soil and uh, if they are not able to water, why are they not able to uptake water in the soil? And also how much this water extracted from deep in the soil can contribute to the plant's uh, biomass and the yield. Of course, there is a nitrogen fixation and redistribution in the soil. It could be used also as forage. And another, um, another benefit that could arise and is arising nowadays in more conservation agriculture is that uh, what they call biotillage is like a crop like lucerne, which is it grow in the very deep soil layers. It will kind of uh, create a bio, what we call biopores and facilitate the next next crop to grow inside these biopores. And also by reaching these uh, deep soil layers, it will bring organic matter to, this, uh, to the soil and very deep in the soil and enhance the microbiological um, activity in, in all the, those soil layers to generalize, uh, enhance the soil uh, structure and quality. So this is a, a huge benefit for, for, for farmers. I really like to work on, on this project because um, it's what we call ecological uh, engineering. So it's try to develop agricultural system uh, based on what nature uh, can do the best. We know a lot about common uh, plants grown uh, worldwide like wheat, and, but there is uh, still a huge variety of plants that we know very little. Or if we grow this plant as crops, uh, could have a huge uh, advantage for farmers and for agriculture in general. So I really like the fact that we are trying to, to understand better what, how the plant is functioning and how could this be beneficial uh, for agricultural system. Yeah, that that's would be a good definition of agroecology. Try to understand what, what uh, nature do the best and uh, how can we use this in uh, agricultural practices. That would be my definition. <laughs>